in the name of my ancestors. Peace forever and always, and welcome to another edition of what we call the Realities Temple on Earth Internet Ministry. I am the gatekeeper, the host of this program, known here on social media, wherever you may find me, I am known as the mighty, 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 mm. angel snub nub seven. I am your soul brother, <laughs> number one. We want to come before you this afternoon, uh, this evening, or this morning, whenever you have an opportunity to listen to our few words, I would like to bring a topic to our attention just for a brief moment in time. We want to entertain something that we call Malcolm X unconquered still. Not conquered, un, not conquered, still. How can you be gone from this world and claim that someone or somebody has not been conquered? Throughout time, and many of us are history buffs, we are familiar, we love to show off our intelligence, we love to show off our research, we always get the information, whether we understand the research, whether we understand the information, that's a whole new different topic, do we comprehend what we research? Do we really understand our own scholarship? But I'm very sure that we would agree, or at least we have heard, that in time or throughout history, there have been leaders or even individuals for some reason or other targeted by the powers that be government sometimes could be your friend or you thought somebody was your friend. And these persons in history become a victim of what we call assassination. The reason for assassination is that somebody possibly could pose a threat, sometimes simply not liked. But when we think of assassination, most times we think about somebody in a high place that poses a threat, somebody who can influence the masses to go in a direction that's not very good for what we want to do if we are in power. So that person or persons become a threat to your rule, a threat to your livelihood. So in history we see or we know about famous assassinations like that of Julius Caesar and one of his friends, I think it was Brutus. He was shocked that Brutus was part of the assassination plot. We know of assassination from Julius Caesar to the late Abraham Lincoln of the United States of America who was assassinated not too long after the end of the Civil War 
in this country we call the United States of America. So the purpose of assassination is to stop somebody from doing something we don't like or influencing others to do something we don't like. So it's the it's the all wise, always used concept of cutting the head off and the body dies. So whatever it was that made Rome fear or those who wanted power, there was something about Julius Caesar. If we kill Julius Caesar, it will make our life easier. If we murder Abraham Lincoln, it will stop this foolishness of treating black people right or giving them some type of justice. We don't want that. And if you notice, that's exactly what happened. Because those who come after Abraham Lincoln did not continue some kind of humanity for the slave. They actually put the hammer down and made things much worse for the once called Negro in America. Dr. Martin Luther King was assassinated in Memphis, Tennessee. You cut off the body, rather, you cut off the head, and the body falls. And his organization and everything he was fell. This is the purpose of assassination because dead men tell no tales. And unfortunately, the vast majority of us, we are followers. We don't see ourselves as leaders. And we don't think for ourselves. So when Dr. King fall, that's the end. When Elijah Muhammad of the Nation of Islam, of whom this brother Malcolm X was a member of when he died in 1975 the organization fell because when the head dies the one who is doing all the thinking nobody else is allowed to do any thinking nobody else is allowed to lead nobody is allowed the people aren't allowed to understand exactly what they need to do. So when the head dies, when the leader is assassinated, then the walls of Jericho come tumbling down. And so assassination is a good idea for those who are in power, those who uh, simply have a problem because that's permanent. I don't have to worry about Julius Caesar anymore. I don't have to worry about Dr. King. I don't have to worry about Abraham Lincoln. That's the end. And so in February of 1965, there were those who had the mindset the same mindset of those who would murder Julius Caesar and Abraham Lincoln or Dr. King. They had this same mindset of assassination. So this plan of murder was directed at Malcolm X, El Haj Malik Shabazz. We know him as simply Malcolm X. Malcolm X stood on the rostrum on the podium. And before he could even 
began to speak shotgun blasts rang out Malcolm X was unarmed and his little girls and his wife watched a father a family man fall backwards and crash onto the floor his wife and his children watched him as he took his last breath if that if that was possible assassination is a very cowardly act and this is why they really really hide they don't want to be known it's nothing to brag about nobody really takes credit for assassination because it's a cowardly act the person the who is the target most of the time they are unarmed and helpless and those who are the killers are armed to the teeth it is a very cowardly act yellow people what is so sad in what we call the american wild west the wild wild west because there was no law in the west at one time it was wild there was no law but even in the early days of the migrating to the west and there was no law there were those or it was viewed upon by many if you shoot a man in the back that's one of the worst things you could do and you could get hung yourself you do not shoot an unarmed person now here we are in the wild wild west and people living with no law but they frowned upon anybody that would shoot somebody unarmed or shoot somebody in the back this is why no one comes out to brag about assassination because it's a cowardly pathetic loser act cowards are so pitiful this is it's a cowardly yellow disgusting pathetic losers and they hope or will they know that what they have achieved it has been accomplished Malcolm stood on the rostrum I don't know I wasn't there but I could imagine that when facing something that he knew probably was coming he just prepared himself and looked well, well here we go and he smiled well I knew it as though it was welcome and so the medical examiner would come out before the public many grieving and crying and he would tell the public the man you know or once knew as Malcolm X he is no more and so for the cowards and those who support the cowards the celebration began of the murder of this man by the religion that he was converted to by the brothers that he once and they once said they loved him now they celebrate his death 
but we are taught that Islam is peace. What is peaceful? Whether you like this brother, disagree, what is peaceful about you as a Muslim? And doesn't it say in the Quran that Muslims should not kill Muslims, but they do it in America, they do it in Arabia, they do it wherever you find Islam, they kill one another. Hypocrites, fake and fraud, and they smile and skin and grin in your face and want you to become part. I will never become part, and you should not want to become a part of something diabolical and evil like this. There's nothing peaceful. about Islam or really any religious system because this is how they act. They talk peace and actions speak louder than words so I don't care what you say out of your mouth. Your actions show that you're not a peace-loving people. You don't believe in peace. Not even among your own because whether you like Malcolm X or not, he was a Muslim. You should not want to become part of that. And you turn around and you celebrate. And so you celebrate. And you have a good time. And you feel. What's the word I'm looking for? You feel much better. Comfortable now. And Malcolm is gone. Ding dong, Malcolm is dead. Ba ba ba, da 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 da. Ding dong, the wicked, evil Malcolm X is dead. That's what they say. El Haj Malik Shabazz, he's dead. All praises due to Allah. And so. Julius Caesar is assassinated, and so. Abraham Lincoln, Dr. King, and so many others in history have been cowardly, gunned down, or poisoned, regardless to the method. And there's a celebration that we have cut the head from the body. That problem has been eliminated. The thing about assassination, sometimes, is that a person can become what they call a martyr. And see, the wicked didn't take this into consideration. Because you thought Malcolm X was just Malcolm X. When Malcolm X was more than Malcolm X, Malcolm X was just a physical body. But Malcolm X, when he was assassinated, he became a martyr. And when you enter what we call martyrdom, Malcolm X, the physical man, is the symbol. But what he represented was way beyond the physical flesh. Malcolm X represented in this reality, in the flesh, an idea, a thought, a wanting. And you can murder the physical flesh, but you cannot murder the idea. Because the idea is outside of bullets or poison. It is the natural part of humanity. And it cannot die. Now, what really made Malcolm X a threat was that in this physical body, he could apply brilliantly the idea. 
the wanting. That's what made Malcolm X a threat in the physical. But see, it's natural for us to want to get up out of oppression. It's natural for us to want to stop that which caused us harm. So when we are sick and there's a virus, we want to stop the virus. If there's a dog chasing us, trying to bite our leg, we need to do something, pick up a rock or a stick. We have to stop the threat. We must stop that. And it is natural, whether you are man or animal or plant, it is natural for us to stand up and fight that which causes us harm. And Malcolm X was a great example of that. So you murder the physical flesh. You murder the body. But you did not murder or you cannot murder the idea. And we rally around what is left of the body. The pictures now the DVDs and the tapes, we rally around that because we want to be like that. Because he was an example, he expressed how we feel. Malcolm X was a great example of expressing our hurt and our pain. And I want to be like that. I want to be able to apply myself like this man. So actually, if you wanted to assassinate Malcolm X, you should have took the advice of the old Pharaoh of the Bible where Pharaoh decided, I'm going to kill the threat before it can even become a threat. Let's kill all the young boys or something to that effect. We're going to try to, we want to kill the threat even before it becomes a threat. But Malcolm was beyond that. So our brother Malcolm has been gone from us since 1965. You can't really tell. And he left behind images. And he left behind his voice. And those who were not even born they view his mannerism. They hear his voice. They see his sincerity. And even beyond this life, he continues to have an effect. So those who still will rally behind his slanderers, those who gossip about him and lie and those who who wasn't even born because of these wicked people they don't like him they find themselves upset and they really don't know what to do because the physical that you would want to murder again if you could you can't do that. But he's still here. And his legacy will be greater than all those who wished his death. His legacy will be greater than his teacher and those whom he taught. His legacy. And you can get angry all you want to. There's nothing you can do about it. Because he was sincere about his. Are we standing here to say that Malcolm X was perfect and holy and righteous? Of course not. I could tell you some stories that I heard through the grapevine. Malcolm could get a little angry. Malcolm could get a little violent. In these cases, I think that he was justified. You had 
you have some dirty, low-down people. And Malcolm actually had the influence to turn things differently had he wanted to, but he was a Muslim practicing his faith and he refused to use violence or suggest violence against his Muslim brothers and sisters. Not only because of who he was, but because of the faith itself. And he was real about it. And he's still here. And how can you be a Muslim and you want to assassinate and kill another Muslim when you are taught, Muslims are taught that in the service of Allah, a Muslim never dies. Because a Muslim, Allah is, is a Muslim and Muslim is Allah. You're all one and the same. As long as Islam is in existence, a Muslim never dies and Islam is forever. So how do you, oh, why did you believe that for some reason, because you took Malcolm X physical life, you became the judge and the jury, not Allah. Malcolm X did not die because of Allah. Because of the envious, the jealous, the real hypocrites. And this is why the nation of Islam's greatest helper. You murdered your greatest helper because you are the real hypocrite. You are the real traitor and the real fool. How the hell would you want to take out yourself your greatest helper? The one that put you on the map that made you what you are. That's stupid as hell. So in conclusion, Rest in peace, Brother El Haj Malik Shabazz. Rest in peace, Brother Malcolm X. Because your body is gone. But you are the greatest and one of the greatest warriors the once called Negro in America has ever produced. And we miss you. And again, many of us wasn't even born. But we are with you because you are with life. And you represent the idea of struggling in that life against the oppression that continues to poison or continue to be a problem for us even to this day. And I would say, if we understood and understand the premise of Malcolm X and we evolve and grew from where he was because his wisdom and his greatness stopped in 1965, if we understood his mindset and how he was evolving so that never again will assassination stop us unless they kill all of us, unless they get rid of all of us. And don't think there are not those out there in the world who don't think that way. Let's get rid of all of them. This is where the word genocide comes from. But even so, all of us should be leaders unto ourselves and all of us should understand where we need to go. All of us need to grow and evolve. And we need to make things very difficult for our enemy. That you can't kill a head and the body fall because all of us, every man, woman, and child in the struggle, we are all leaders. 
there was a movie. I think it was called. Uh, I can't pronounce it. Acapolo, something like that. I can't pronounce what that word is. But there was a tribe of people in South America, I believe. That's where it was. Uh, that's where they were at. Or, or at some ancient time in South America. And another tribe wiped this other tribe out, wiped all the adults. The adult men and women killed all of them. And the children were able to escape. They were able to get on a boat and go get on a boat and sail down the river. All the adults were gone. But the children carried the knowledge and the traditions, everything of that people, the children knew. And they went on to grow up and reestablish that tribe. So here we are. And you thought you murdered Malcolm X. But even in death, he was able to get on a boat, sail down a river, and reestablish himself. And there are so many who are jealous. <laughs> so jealous. So disappointed. But Malcolm X lived. So at the end of the Spike Lee movie in 1992, all the children, they make a declaration. I am Malcolm X. I am Malcolm X. I am Malcolm X. And we here listening to these words. I am Malcolm X. But I would like to also add Although we respect Malcolm X and we love our prince, we should want to be greater and evolve further than Malcolm X. Because to say that we are simply Malcolm X means that we stop where Malcolm X stopped. And he would not want that. No parent want their child to stop or be who they are. Every good parent, every loving parent want their children to evolve and be better and go to a higher plateau than they themselves do. And that's one of the greatest things that we could do. And make this man we know of as Malcolm X very, very proud. So on that note, thank you for listening. Jot down your comments. And we will catch you on the flip. As our ancestor Don Cornelius used to always say as in parting, I want to wish us love, peace, and soul. And we are Audi 5000.